riding in the car with my friend one day when she makes a comment about how pretty my lip gloss was and that my lips look very sexy. Immediate side eye. I say thank you with hesitation, but it doesn't stop there. While waiting through the drive-thru, she asks me to kiss her. Say what? My hands immediately come, begin sweating. I'm sweating up under my arms. I can't catch my breath, but I'm laughing uncontrollably. I keep saying no, and I try to scoot away as far as I can. And then she says, well, just kiss me once. And if you don't like it, we never have to do it again. I keep saying no, but my mind and other parts of my body are saying yes, yes, ooh, yes. <laughs> We didn't kiss that day. We talked on the phone. Now later on, the conversations we had would put phone sex operators to shame. <laughs> I couldn't wait to tell my cousins what had happened. I told them that my friend wanted to kiss me and that I was actually attracted to her. On January 19th, we started dating. I introduced my girlfriend to my mom as my friend. I knew I could never tell my mother that I was dating a woman, but this just feels right. She understands me. Our periods have synced. <laughs> I feel special. I always want to be in her arms. <sighs> I always wanted to be in her arms. I felt at peace. Finally, our relationship was easy, except that no one could know. She was in the closet, and so was I. One night, my cousins were at my house, talking to my mom, smoking cigarettes, drinking coffee, on a normal Saturday. I got called away, but when I returned home, I remember my cousins being gone, and my mother fuming with rage. We argued for what seemed like hours. Then I realized, in the 30 minutes that I was gone, I was outed by my own family, my blood. After three years, I ended my relationship with my girlfriend. I felt like I was the only one working to keep us together. I never felt so unappreciated and alone in my life, not to mention, I honestly believe she cheated. After a while, I found myself confiding in someone who understands how I feel. After a year, she's helped me to mend my heart, and then one day I looked at her differently. I had fallen in love with her. We told each other we loved each other all the time, and we talked about dating, but she had recently got our relationship, and neither one of us wanted to ruin our friendship. On November 10th, 2014, my mother was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer, which had spread to her brain. My mother is fearless. She was scared, but fearless. I reached out to my friend and she was there for me. She was the first person I told that my mother's more than 28 years of smoking may be the very thing that takes her away from me. I called my dad, and he came immediately. One day, my dad and I went out for breakfast at Cracker Barrel, and when our food arrived, he asked me, was I dating anyone? I quickly replied, no. I could feel the urge to tell him that I was attracted to women swell up in my throat, but the image of him tossing one of those huge tables across the room quickly took over my thoughts. My dad is 6'4". I started talking to him about a past relationship with a boyfriend, and I said, Papa Smurf, that's what I call him, what would you say if I never got married? He said it would be my choice. OK, so far, so good. <laughs> then I said, you know, my relationship with my ex-boyfriend didn't end so well, and my relationship with my ex-girlfriend now this time, I'm playing with my pancakes with my forks, and I'm moving my peaches around, and I'm looking down, and I slowly look up with one eye still closed, <laughs> because I'm ready for him to toss this table across the room or joke me up by my clothes. But when I open my eyes, he's completely calm. 
he looks at me with his big eyes and says, so yeah, what about your ex-girlfriend? Oh, well, <laughs> I sit up straight, and with a big smile on my face, I ask, you don't care that I date women or may never be able to get married? He says, in the only way that he can, I don't give a shit who you're with. As long as you're happy and they treat you right. Live in your own truth. And don't let your goddamn mother try to take your joy. <laughs> my dad was always my favorite. In June 2015, I was out with my mom when some form of courage from the heavens above moved me to drive my car over to my special woman's house. I kept waiting for her to break out her holy oil and condemn us both to hell. But the only thing she does is take off her wig and show her bald head from the chemo and radiation. They were laughing and joking. I was completely amazed. On the way home, she asked, why don't you ever bring her by? She is so sweet. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> In July 2015, my mother's health changed drastically. She went from being able to drive to now having me drive her to and from work and write up all the checks to pay the bills. The radiation has shrunk the brain cancer, but they grew back with a vengeance. She went from having six small tumors to more than 30 scattered in her brain in a matter of months. But she never stopped working. She went to work every day. She went to church on Tuesday for Bible study, Thursday for choir rehearsals, Saturday for any church events, and Sunday for church. My mother is a beast. In August, she kept saying that she wanted to go home to see her parents. In a matter of two weeks, she went from being able to walk with some assistance to now being completely wheelchair bound, had a seizure, and her bowels completely impacted from the morphine we had to give her for the pain. Again, I called on the Lord, and then I called my special woman. Vitas was my saving grace. They kept us strong enough to make it back to Jacksonville. On October 9th, 2015, my mother celebrated her 61st birthday. I read her two birthday cards I had given her, and I told her how much I loved her. I could feel this ball in the bottom of my throat. I wanted to tell her who I really was. But I could feel it just moving up my throat, in my mouth, and on my tongue, and at my teeth, and on my breath. But I swallowed it. I couldn't tell my mother that her daughter is a lesbian on her birthday. What if God healed her enough to smack the shit out of me? <laughs> so, I decided to wait. Tomorrow is the day. On October 10th, my mother's health declined rapidly. This was one of the worst days of my life. I had to sign the DNR papers and her medications were increased to keep her sleeping and comfortable. The nurses assured me and my family that my mother could still hear everything, so tell her any and everything we have ever wanted to say. But I still couldn't do it. I was too chicken shit. So I gave myself a pep talk and I said, tomorrow is the day. On October 11th, I knew what I had to do. About two weeks earlier, a nurse had told me that she could tell when a patient was about to pass because they spike a really high fever in the soles of their feet and the palms of their hands get cool or cold to touch because the blood is going to their vital organs trying to sustain life. Now from that point on, anytime I walk into my mom's room, I touch the soles of her feet and then 
I touched her hands. On this day, I walked in, touched her feet. They were warm. All right. <laughs> I touched her hands. And they were on fire, so hot. The CNA told me that my mom had a slight temperature, but nothing to be worried about. My aunt and I were at home when we got a call that we had to pick up my mother's prescriptions. On the way back, I told myself, it is either now or never. Today is the day. I walked into my mom's room feeling proud because I knew exactly what I was about to do and say. I touched her feet. And they were cool. But her eyes were open. I said, hey, Jelly Bean, hey, Mama, I love you, I love you. I touched her hands, and they were cold. My heart immediately dropped to the floor. I began crying to the point that I couldn't even see because I knew exactly what was happening, and I felt helpless because there was nothing I could do to stop it. I needed her here. I am her only child, and I needed her. I kept kissing her cheeks and I told her, I love you, I love you so much. I kept touching her face because I knew that would be the last time. She breathed three more times. On October 11th, 2015, at 6.13 p.m., my mother passed. When I went to the funeral home, this was the first time I was gonna see my mother since she passed. When the funeral director opened the doors, I could see her laying there from a distance in the casket. Couldn't breathe. My mom's breast friend and I got there early so we could fix her hair and her makeup. As we were walking up, we noticed something odd. We kept looking and her wig was on backwards. <laughs> we looked at each other and I said, these damn white people got my mother and they're looking crazy. chance to tell my mom my big secret. I think she knew, but I never got to tell her. Again, I reached out to my special woman, and she was there for me, but not the same way she used to be. It's been said that when someone isn't giving you the same amount of attention as they had been, it's because someone else has their attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> During the same week that my mother passed, I found out that my special woman had her own filthy special woman. <laughs> she said that she would be there for me, but she wasn't. She wasn't by my side at the funeral service. She wasn't by my side at the burial service. It wasn't until about two months later that I found out that she had plans to marry her special woman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How could she marry someone she just met when she said she loved me? She was still telling me she loved me. It wasn't until later that I found out that she would never have dated me anyways because of my weight. She likes flat stomachs and fat asses. <laughs> While crying over the devastating loss of my mother, I was also crying over the betrayal of an assumed friend. What I've come to realize is, yes, I am a lesbian. A big one. <laughs> yes. I am also a plus size 
dark Godiva chocolate. My beautiful and courageous mother passed on Sunday, October 11th. I didn't realize until recently that October 11th is National Coming Out Day. Ah, look at the universe. I never got to tell my mom my big secret, but I am here and you are all here. I now consider you all a part of my family. Thank you for being so supportive and allowing me to come out to you. Thank you.